This measure got a significant endorsement today from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now, to be clear, Mormon doctrine remains the same, marriage as the union of a man and a woman. However, a statement from the LDS Church expressed support for both protecting religious freedom and respecting LGBTQ rights under the law. Hi everybody, my name's James. Welcome to California High Desert Preacher. Today's video is going to be discussing There is a falsehood that some are born with an attraction to their own kind and that they can do nothing about it. They are just that way. That is a malicious, destructive lie. It is of the devil. No one is locked into that kind of life. No one is predestined to a life of perversion. Let us be clear tonight. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints believes that the experience of same-sex attraction is a complex reality for many people. The attraction itself is not a sin even though individuals do not choose to have such attractions, they choose how to respond to them. Welcome everybody to California High Desert Preacher. Today's video is going to be discussing Mormon Church Voices Support for Same-Sex Marriage Law. Here on November 16th of 2022 on End Time Headlines, I find this website to be and only publishing things that are verified. All that being said, before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. That's like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, whether it be your friend at church, your pastor, your mom, your brother, your sister, tell them about the channel. And if you like the content, don't forget to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. All right, without further ado, let's jump right into the video. The topic is, why is the LDS church going out here politically? and supporting the LGBT community at the same time they're claiming that their stance on same-sex relationship, as far as God goes, has not changed. Something is amiss, my friends. Something doesn't make any sense. So let's find out what it is. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints said on Tuesday it would back proposal for federal legislation to safeguard same-sex marriage, making the latest show of support for the measure for the conservative-leaning group. Now, nearly 17 million members of the Utah-based faith said in a statement that church doctrine would continue to consider same-sex relationships to be against God's commandments. Now, let's stop there. When you say God's commandments, exactly. What are you saying? Are you talking about the LDS Watchtower Mormon Bible or the actual true uh, affirmed Bible, the King James or the Christian Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? All that being said, let me continue to read. Yet it is said it would support the rights for the same-sex couples as long as they didn't infringe upon the religious group's rights to believe as they choose. So let's stop there as well. So what it sounds like to me, and if I'm wrong, somebody from the LDS Church, please contact me as I have contacted their global number. I've contacted their temple in Utah. I've contacted their temple in Redlands, California, which is the closest temple to me, and they have not returned my phone calls. All right, and anybody who's a member of the LDS Church, is uh, welcome to leave me uh, a comment down below as well. So right here it says they're going to support their rights for same-sex couples as long as this LGBT group doesn't infringe upon how they uh, traditionally view their religious views. So uh, that means to me that as long as the LGBT doesn't try to take them to court using the so-called laws in the land to force them and through uh, performing same-sex marriages or change their so-called traditions and their ceremonies inside of their temple and how they do things where it's just considered to be a man and a woman 
versus two men or two women. Now, I find this rather disturbing, and I'll be honest with you. From my perspective, this is disgusting and is nauseating. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says that God loves everybody, no matter where you come from, no matter what language you speak, no matter what your skin color, your nationality, or your sexual desire is. God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. And Jesus tells us to love everybody, to love thy neighbor as thyself. All right. Now that I have said that, I want to point out some other things here. Support for the Respected for Marriage Act under the consideration of Congress and the church's latest step to stake out a more welcoming stance toward the LGBT community. That's right. To welcome a stance toward the LGBT community while holding firm to its beliefs that same-sex relationships are sinful. Now, can anybody explain to me, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, is that not a self-defeating statement? So you want to extend your hand towards the LGBT community and let them know that they're welcome to come and join your church or your community or your temple and then be a part of your religious beliefs. At the same time, your stance is you don't biblically or religiously believe that it's acceptable to your God. Because I have to say this, their version of Jesus Christ and God in the Bible has nothing to do with the real Bible or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. And I'm studying religion. I have been doing so for quite some time at home. And I can tell you, there are two totally different opposites. They're on one end of the spectrum and the other's on the other, as well as they need to stop calling themselves Christians because nowhere in the Bible... Talking about Jesus Christ and the Gospels that Jesus ever affirmed. Same-sex marriage or relationships or pedophilia. And we know from recent times, and I have videos on this channel to prove that the LGBT community is not only doing what I'm about to say that they're doing in public schools at grade school level, but they're doing it in high school and college. They're inviting children into their nightclubs and bars, and they call it dragging kids to Pride Week, and they have these members of the drag queen uh, community up doing sexual dances in front of these children while the children are encouraged to take money and put it in their clothes like they were at a gay strip club. Then that's exactly what's going on. All that being said, this is what the LGBT community does with children, and this is what the LDS church is affirming and politically supporting. And it's come out and it's in mainstream media. Again, I did try to find a way to get a hold of the LDS church. I was unsuccessful to affirm what's being said here in this video, but they did affirm it with mainstream media. Therefore, I believe I have a green light to make this video. Now, if anybody from the LDS church wants to to accuse me of misrepresenting them, then they need to contact their organization and have a member of them get a hold of me on my YouTube channel, and then we will go from there, and I will do a revised version of this video, and it'll be part two. But until then, um, and then if they do that, they also need to contact their local mainstream news sources and do the same thing. I just want to put that out there as well. But I'll continue to read real quick, okay? Uh, this is a part of the church overall theology, essentially sustaining the law of the land, recognizing, mm -hmm, here we go, that what they dictate and enforce for their members in terms of their behavior is different than what is means to be a part of a pluralistic society, he said. So what they're trying to do now, and here's the funny thing about the Mormon or the LDS church. They believe the very foundation of their faith system is based on the Holy Bible. Not the Mormon Bible, the Holy Bible. Joseph Smith claims that there has been a period of apostasy where the first century church had lost the ability to keep scripture and doctrine truthful. And so because of that, after Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, there was hypocrisy. All that being said, that every copy of every Bible that has ever been printed since then, and every person that's ever teach biblical doctrine since then, has been diluted, polluted, and not true. 
They claimed that the God of the universe, they claimed that the God that created everything was not capable of making sure that his book and his teachings and his words <laughs> was able to be. And this is what kills me. He was not capable of keeping the truth going out. That it took Joseph Prince to be able to preserve the true gospel. And that an angel by the name of Moroni came and gave him these golden tablets, which was the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Another revelation of Jesus Christ, which the Bible clearly teaches to stay away from anybody or persons or belief system that should say these exact same words. And I've offered this scripture to them and they completely reject it. All that being said, now, using the logic of the LDS church, okay, saying that we're going to uh, politically support you. And for all I know, they could be financially supporting the alphabet community. It wouldn't surprise me, but I have no proof to support that, but I would not be surprised if that came out in the near future. I will start digging and try to look into that, okay? All that being said, it would be like me saying, okay, so I'm a Christian, right? And inside of my organization, I don't believe that God believes in accepting abortion, but I'm going to go ahead and vote for more abortion laws so people can go to the abortion clinics and mutilate and murder their unborn children. This is the ideology or the logic and the reasoning that the LDS church is using. At the same time, they're claiming that it's because of scripture in the Bible that gives them the green light to do that. What scripture am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about Romans chapter 13. Let's look at that real quick. So it says right here in the English Standard Version of the Bible, let every person be subjected to the governed authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and that those exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct. Wait, what did that say? Let's stop. Go back to the beginning of verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct. What does that mean? Uh, let's let's finish that. But to bad. Would, would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your, go, uh, for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For... He is the servant of God as an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Now, if we look at what the Bible is and who God is, the Bible would be our very foundation of morality and what's acceptable. Okay, And we're not talking about a theocracy here, but we are talking about the Bible as far as God tells us how to live our life and what is morally acceptable to him. since. The LGBT community lifestyle is an abomination unto God. And it talks about this in the book of Leviticus. And it talks it about in the book of Romans. Let's go ahead and jump right down here to verse 16. This is Paul that had wrote this to the church of Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Right here at God's wrath on unrighteousness, in verse 18 it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. So what it's saying is everybody who suppresses the truth of God and his word and morality is doing so and in righteousness. OK, verse 19 goes on to say, for what can be known about God is plain to them. And it's easy to understand. God has shown it to them. And this includes the LDS church. OK, 
his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived over since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. This involves every human being that has ever walked this earth since the fall of man till present time and day. God has made sure that the apostles of first century church went to all four corners of the world and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Man is guilty of rejecting and suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. Verse 21 goes on to say, For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, kind of like the LDS church is doing. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immoral God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. This is where man has created their own deities out of their hands, out of wood, clay, uh, plaster, bronze, gold, silver, cement, and all sorts of material. And then they worship that God. So I would rather worship the God that created me versus the God that man has created with his own two hands. There's a reason why they've done uh, just that. And I'll continue to explain that by reading this right here, starting at verse 24. Therefore, God gave them up to the lust of their hearts, to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And worship and serve the creator or the creature rather than the creator. They serve and worship themselves. This is the atheist community. This is the evolutionist community. Okay. This is those who are the agnostic community. These are the members of the LGBT community. They deny God is real and exists and that they are the creation and he's the creator. Rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For the reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions, here we go, for the women exchange natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relationships with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error, monkeypox, AIDS, and so on. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetedness, malice. They are full of envy and murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossipers and slanders, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithful, heartless, and ruthless. They know. God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Let's go back over that part of verse 32 all over again. Though they know God's righteous decree, they, those who practice such things, deserve to die. They not only do them, but give approval to do to those who practice them. That sounds like the LGBT community and the LDS church to me. Now, all that being said, everything that I just read for you in Romans chapter one and capitalizes this whole issue. Paul wrote the book of Romans. It is one of the books of the letters of the 66 books of the Bible that is the inherent Holy Spirit, Word of God. But yet the Book of Mormon, they believe, is the correct revelation of Jesus Christ. Although they say that the Holy Bible is the very foundation of their religion and their faith and they believe, they turn around and try to defute the Holy Bible and say that it's corrupt. To me, that's just as much as a self-defeating statement as the Mormon church supporting the LGBT community politically and then claiming that although they still hold to their beliefs, that same-sex marriage is an abomination and is unacceptable to God. It absolutely is a self-defeating, no sense. And God does not accept it. Nowhere 
in the Old Testament or the New Testament where you find that God says that he affirms, that he agrees, that he accepts, nor does he command and demand the body of Christ to follow government when it goes against all biblical principle. If we go to the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, and we read the creation story, it clearly states that marriage is to be between one man and one woman, one male and one female, not one man and 700 women, not between two men and two women, not a man or a woman marrying, marrying his broom, his mop, his dog, his car, his tree, his brother, his sister, his daughter, his son, uh, or, or having a harem. Okay? Being bisexual, straight, gay, transgender, none of these things are acceptable to God. And they're not anywhere in the first book of creation, the book of Genesis in the Holy Bible. But yet, we have all these religious heretics and all these heretical faith systems that have been coming out of the woodwork for the last 200 years claiming different. The Bible clearly states that if somebody does something like that, to turn and run and get away from them because they are a heretic. They're preaching a lie. Now, if you guys live in the Victor Valley area and would like to join me in evangelizing the high desert, feel free to click on the link down in the description part of the video where you'll find my email address. Also, guys, let's not forget the Great Commission given in Scripture in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, Mark 16, 15, 1 Peter 3, 15. God has called every believer to be a witness to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Join me and let's take back the high desert from the pro-abortion, pro-atheist, and pro-evolution communities. Also, guys, I need prayer warriors. Please keep me in this ministry in prayer. Thank you and God bless.